just leaving in the guys. Ah, uh, Kilian. You can't, ma! Oi! Kilian, ma'am. David was not far. Did you check the last episode? Here's what happened. Previously on the Golden Trail World Series, the opening event of the season was held in Zegama. Zegama was my favorite race of the season and uh, we started very strong, very fast. Uh, and it was very hot, so after we slowed down, but I managed to win for the ninth time there and I really feel like home running in Zegama. I went to Zegama. Uh, it was my first marathon and I uh, I really had no expectations and uh, I won it and uh, that was the best experience of this season. The second stop of the series was the Mont Blanc Marathon. The race was hard, there was a lot of heat, but I managed to take the win. It was my best result in trail running so far. Uh, Mount Blanc was my first race of the season and it played out pretty similar to the year before where I didn't take the lead until the last 5k. But um, yeah, I was really happy to win here for the second time. After running under the shade of the Mont Blanc, we moved to Italy for the third stop of this series. Canate was a great race. Winning two races in a row boosted my confidence. I came to Canate, it was my first race, and I actually wasn't really sure what I'm capable to do in such longer races. After Italy, we went to Switzerland for the legendary Sierra Zinal race. This year I have really trained for that, and uh, I was very happy to win again and mostly to break the record. It was a, a dream coming true. I was hoping to lead the race, and yes, I did. I managed to win and to break the record. Time to cross the Atlantic Ocean all the way to Colorado for the Pikes Peak Marathon. Pikes Peak Marathon was uh, the last race I did for a uh, qualified to Nepal final, uh, and I won the race, but I came very far from Matt Carpenter's record. After Sierra Zinal, I felt good, so I decided to compete at Pikes Peak and here too. I was able to lead the race from the start and to break the record. From hot Colorado to rainy Scotland, the Ring of Steel was the last opportunity to qualify for the big finale. This year I wanted to win and to bring home the Ring of Steel race. It's a very technical race as I like. And yeah, the victory of this year gives me some good chances to win the series. La possibilità di poter vincere la la Golden Trail Series. Ring of Steel was my third and last chance to qualify for the final in Nepal, so it was now or never, and I did it. I managed to win the race and break the record. And now we're off to Nepal. Welcome to the country of temples, tropical forests and the highest mountains in the world. Welcome to Nepal. The top 10 world's best runners will compete in the heart of the Himalayas for the grand finale of the Golden Trail World Series. The Himalayan range contains 10 of the famous 14 8000ers. The legendary Annapurna region is the most popular trekking area in Nepal. From high altitude trails to narrow tracks and a technical downhill in the jungle, this race has it all. Uh, I think uh, the two young Italians, Davide Magnini and Nadir Maget, they are probably the, the stronger right now. In the rankings in front of me I have Killian. And I know he's been in the Himalayas for a few weeks, so for sure he's well acclimatized. That's why I think tomorrow is going to be hard to beat him. Kilian and Nadir have uh, more points than me in the overall ranking, so if I want to win the series, I have to beat them. The best show up, uh, the best one to, to win, and, and really when you are here, you really feel that uh, you are fighting against the best. This is my last chance to revalidate the title. At the moment I'm the Gold Trail leader and um, I need a really good race and I need to beat Maud 
to have the chance to win this first. Alors là, pour la grande finale... Euh, for the grand finale, uh, Judith Witter is yeah, one of my yeah, biggest rivals. Il, uh, 60%, della... 60 of the final yeah, ranking is composed of Salomon athletes. Yeah. So tomorrow I'll try to bring La Sportiva as high as no possible. Sportiva. So, where are we? It's perfect. <laughs> it's really cute. It's, uh, it's maybe how it should be. <laughs> Uh, it was kind of a festive atmosphere, a lot of uh, really excited kids running around, a lot of uh, runners from all over the world who were excited to explore this challenge. Good morning and welcome to Nepal for the last race of the season. These will be starting in a few seconds. The athletes are lined up and ready to go. Let's wait for the countdown. And here it goes, five, four, three, two, one. And the final of the Golden Trail World Series is on. We have a long day ahead. Let's see what happens. So I was filming at kilometer 10 and then I read that on the WhatsApp group. At that moment, I realized it was screwed up. So in the beginning of the race, I was following Ingvild and she got her poles out. She started pushing quite hard, so I put my head down to catch her, and then when I looked up, she was gone. I was with um, Ingvild, Alian, Amadine, and Elisa. Then we all gathered, and it was kind of like, I think all of us were a bit disappointed and sad, because then we thought we were out of the race. Yeah, it happened, and you can't do anything about it. Fuck. Everyone is going wrong. It's crazy. It's like not even a race. <laughs> Everybody get lost. Oh. All the seven girls. Yeah. Yeah. Very well marked. <laughs> Sorry? Very well marked. Yeah. I normally get lost. Why? I don't know. We tried different paths and we got really confused. So I was waiting for the girls for almost 40 minutes and suddenly they appear. One hour run. Oh, so I have 15 kilometers now. Go, go, go. How many women there are ahead? Maybe you might be top 10. <laughs> At that point, you kind of know that the chance of getting on the podium is kind of gone. Uh, but uh, Maud, uh, she wasn't there. She must have dropped off. That was my thought. This race is super tough. 42k with 3,600 meters, just that tells you that it's not going to be easy. <laughs> That's quite crazy, but if you compare it to Himalayas, maybe it's not too big. The runners are now approaching Haikam. Sitting at 3,580 meters, it's the highest slipping point along the Marty Himal track. It offers views to the Arnapurna range on the left and to the sacred mountain of Machapuchare on the right. Machapuchare has never been climbed to its summit. The only attempt was in 1957 by a British team which didn't complete the ascent. Since then, the mountain has been declared sacred and is now close to the climbers. I don't think altitude will be a big problem for me. Like last month I was uh, climbing in, in the Kumbu area, I, I get up to 8,300 meters. Uh, so I believe that the 3,700 meters here will not be a big problem. I was just trying to focus on my feelings and to do my own pace. So I saw that I was leading after some minutes of race. I let him go a few uh, few minutes and then I was thinking, okay, no, that's the, that's the guy you need to follow if I want to, to win the race. And after when we started the downhill, I realized that uh, maybe I, I had pushed too much in the first climb. I was feeling pretty good and I went with Tibot. We went together for a few kilometers. But yeah, the altitude hit me hard and when we started downhill, I think three or four guys passed me and then I managed to stay there. Tibot, Aritz and Bim got to the turnaround point really close. 
But now, it looks like Beam is flying on the downhill. When we were in uh, high camp, uh, we were on the 8th station, I was I was so destroyed. Uh, so I was there with Mark, he was filled up um, his soft flasks and uh, I was just standing there trying to like figure out what to do. <laughs> and I ate like a half of a super small cracker and I was <laughs> I struggled to eat and then I suddenly realized, oh shit, I, I should also fill my soft flask. Stian, everything is okay? Uh, the altitude? You look a little, a little bit headache. white. Had a big headache on the way uh, up. Yes. Finally, I was really happy, relieved. I thought, all right, now my, my section starts with a downhill. And the plan was just to run with him in the downhill because he runs so smooth and it's, I feel I run uh, faster and more relaxed when I run um, behind him. But then he get a gap and I was thinking, oh shit, now I just screwed up. I did the mistake, I didn't take any refreshments or didn't eat anything because, yes, I thought it's just going to be the downhill now. I knew it was a long downhill, but I imagined it to be really quick. And, uh, well, it was, it was kind of quick, but even quicker, I bonked really hardly, and then it was really tough. Uh, I was still there, I was quite, uh, quite bad, but after that I started to feel better in the downhill. And then just the feelings was better and better. So yeah, when Stian passed me, uh, I bonked really badly. Uh, in this moment, he took advantage, and uh, yeah, he flew by me. And uh, it was it was a tough moment for me, no, noticing that oh, he's so much faster now. And um, yeah, I had just no choice but uh, believe in me and hoping that uh, that my moment, my a better moment, will come later to to catch up again. I just uh, went off. Um, Mark didn't follow, and then a couple of minutes later, uh, I saw Aritz in front of me, and he, I think he was tired. <laughs> he looks tired, and I passed him, and then I just uh, get a gap to both of them. And that was quite surprised for me, shocking for me. <laughs> yes, maybe two minutes to the third girl, the Nepalese girl. More just dropped off. When I saw Remy and Fanny, they were both filming earlier on and that's when they told me I was fourth. So I asked who was ahead and they said uh, Judith, Sylvia and Sunmaya. And then I said, what about Maud? And they said that she had gone the wrong way and she dropped out of the race and she was back at the finish line. After I saw that we went completely wrong, I didn't want to go back. So I preferred to drop the race but to continue on the track that I knew that went to high camp. It was the track that we took two days ago. Uh, yeah, I saw a mod from high camp to viewpoint. So then after I saw Maud, then people started telling me I was fourth but I thought I'd been third, so I was really confused. I kept running to the 8th station of Haikam to get some food and then they told me that if I ran to the top, to the turning point, I could continue the race. So that's what I did. I was at the top and I raced to the finish line. Yes, someone told me they had gone the wrong way, but I thought that they were all back in the path. I actually didn't realize that they were completely lost and that they had to stop. Not so good now, but I hope it's the attitude. It's still getting better when going down. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. 
After the turning point, I saw Judith about five minutes behind me, and I knew she would catch me on the downhill. No, I didn't know that she was not racing anymore. I heard girls saying she was running wrong, but I mean, you never know what they decide in the jury. So I was just trying to do my race and to try to be faster than her in the finish. Go, 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 go. Um, but afterwards I met Meg, who was telling me she was running wrong, so I was really surprised about that. What the fuck happened with Maud? Oh, I know. Why? She's still on the corner. <laughs> Wait a second. Maud! No! Maud, she dropped. Oh, she dropped? Get her. What? Get her. Ah! Then it's in here. And the rest? No. I've not seen her. Oh, really? Mm. Right up there. What's up? Oh. Let's go now. Yeah, We're still we going up. Yes. What do you need? Almost more fun. It has been a hard race. Right after the start, I felt like my legs were not ready as they normally are. Yeah, I was very tired. As I said from the beginning, it was very difficult and we were in the clouds without having the opportunity to look at the scenery. So, I decided to stop. Beam, Stian, yeah, Beam, Stian and Mark were a little lower. I knew I was a few minutes ahead at the top, so I was able to manage my downhill. Trying to recover if someone from the back caught me up. I saw uh, Thibaut on the way up to the, um, to the turning point and he was uh, looked very strong there. Uh, so I, I was like hoping maybe I can close the gap, but I didn't expect it. I expect it because he's a very good runner. Come on, Stian. Good job. But you can catch up, uh, Thibaut. The fourth place is my place, so yes. <laughs> yeah, Bibi is third, and uh, he is uh, he will finish second, I think. Yeah. Okay. He is very fast in downhill. Okay. Crazy. I knew that uh, the race was hard, but I couldn't imagine so much. When I was at 32k and more than three hours of racing, uh, I ran. I just ran out of uh, energy. We were there um, waiting for Kilian Journey to finish the race, and then suddenly a uh, Bim Gurung came out from nowhere and. Uh, yeah, he thought that uh, he was uh, winning the race. So yeah, he came from the right and then uh, he said, oh no, maybe I need to go turn around and then cross the actual finish line. So maybe then I will win the race. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, we told him I think something went wrong. And yeah, Bim uh, looked around and then he disappeared. It looks like Killian Jornet will take the win. What a perfect season, winning four races back to back. And with this one, he's the 2019 Golden Trail World Series champion. I believe this has been my best year ever. Like, uh, uh, I think the fact of like training more, uh, being uh, racing less, but like really focusing on the races I did, it made that this year it's the year I has been the strongest. Well, I has been racing for uh, more than 15 years and now we see the, the next generations like David Magnini, Jean-Marguerite, Stian, uh, Jacob. Uh, it's many young athletes that they are really showing up or uh, winning races. I really want them to, to come strong and to smash all the, all the things we did. I missed the fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's my spot. Wait a moment, is that Bim again? And he came back on course, and then he finished the race, and he still finished seventh place, which is amazing. I knew it was going to be a, a tough climb, but it, it ended up being a, a tougher climb than I ever thought it would be. Oh, this is hard. This is hard. Too technical for me. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good, man. 
<laughs> okay, buddy. I saw donkeys. I had a dog follow me. I saw little baby goats, little chickens, and people. A lot of people cheering us on. It's nice. Hello, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day. More uphill. I think Judith and Maud will be coming soon. Oh, Judith is extremely strong. I saw her at the turnaround point and she was already close to me and I was thinking she's gonna pass you on the downhill because it's technical and she's amazing with runners. Paige is worried about you. Yes, not to be. <laughs> he was far away. I actually saw her at the last aid station. We both got coked together and she said, you come finish with me. And I said, no, you go ahead. There's. <laughs> and Judith Witter coming in within the overall top 10. This is insane. I think this year has shown quite well how the trail running is um, improving or how the level is getting amazingly high. It has changed in the latest years and I'm sure it will change also the upcoming years. The records have been beaten in almost all races. And I think it will continue like that because athletes are getting more professional. What happened in the final? Of course, I'm a little disappointed. But at the same time, it's a sport. And it has been a great experience that will give me a good motivation for next year. Well, you feel really, 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 really small here, and it's a, it's a good thing. Nepal is like the best country. It's probably one of the most inspiring countries I ever visited. We go rafting! <laughs> I mean, I knew the mountains would be big, but not quite so big. It looks like a, a mirage when you see them like floating up above the valley. It's first because the mountains, I love high altitude. I love the challenge that that offers. What impressed me the most are actually not the mountains. I mean, it's amazing, yes, but uh, it's more the people. Really nice people around, s smiling, really welcoming us. They offer everything to us, even if they have nothing. It's uh, colorful and it's a lot of good taste. Interesting new foods to try that I don't know what I'm eating sometimes, but uh, that's part of the adventure. To spend some time up in the mountains with the others uh, is very fun. He's not bad, huh? Yeah! We're still going up. Hey guys, after experience. <laughs> <laughs>